Good morning. It is good to be back here. I have, I don't know if you remember, but I have ministered here before. And there's been many days since. And I, I have been looking forward to this, to this morning for, for a little while now. And I believe that God is going to do something. It was very fitting this morning that this uh, service, this camp meeting, was opened with worship unto the Lord. I think that it, I don't know if you could have picked a better song to start with than hallelujah unto his name. You see, uh, recently I heard a story from a, another minister who was preaching in a meeting and he said he had been to a big camp meeting and he heard a man of God get up in the pulpit, a great man that was esteemed by others and for about 15 minutes all he would do was tell the congregation to say hallelujah. And they would say hallelujah. And he did this for about 15 minutes. The first couple minutes, everybody was strong with him. 15 minutes into it, they're looking around like, is this all this guy has to say? Did he not come prepared? Did he forget his notes? Or does all, is all he going to do this morning is tell us to say hallelujah? About 15 minutes goes by and they're wondering what's going on. And then all of a sudden, that man of God said, I've been having you say hallelujah for about 15 minutes. Because when we begin to say hallelujah and worship the Lord, what happens is God is lifted up and everything else is pushed down. And if God be lifted up, he will draw men unto him. And God is here to do something mighty in this house. And it's a great thing that we started with hallelujah. It's a great thing we started with praise and worship. For a minute there, if y'all have kept singing that song, I don't know if I'd have got to preach. He's already in this building. So before I begin to get into my word and what I have prepared, I'm wondering if for just a moment you would join me to open the preaching portion of this service. Stand up and raise your hands and begin to shout hallelujah unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Worship him. It is the worship of his saints that creates an atmosphere in which the Holy Ghost can come down into this building and begin to do a work. So this morning we begin to lift our voice unto the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and we worship you with everything inside of us. We worship you from the depths of our spirit and we shout hallelujah to the throne of God. Hallelujah. Is that all you got? I heard you a minute ago. You got more than that. Give him praise. Give him honor. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's him we want to come in this building. It's him we want to do a work. And I believe he's going to. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 I'm honored. I am honored to be here with you. I know that there are thousands of men that you could get that could preach way more eloquent than, eloquent than me. But I am honored to be here. And I have come with the word. And I do believe God's going to do something. Hallelujah. This morning we begin this camp meeting here at Pahokee. And I'm expecting God to do great things. I am. I don't believe that God is just looking to wow you with preaching. I believe the preaching this week will prepare this church for the revival that is to come. Hallelujah. We do not know and we don't have to wait until Friday night to get what we need from the Lord. Come on. Come on here. I believe if you will build your spirit this week through the preached word of God that by the end of this week you will be a force to reckon with. Amen? Hallelujah. I begin to feel something in my spirit just a few weeks ago. Something that I don't normally feel. But I felt like that God was putting inside of me that he was coming to this place this week in every service to do something marvelous and miraculous in this building. I don't come with theatrical words. I come with the truth of the word of God that he has come to do something great. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, would you please turn with me to the book of 2 Kings chapter 4. Bless the Lord. I will confess that 
for the majority of this week, I'm not preaching red hots that I've had stuck away that I've preached in different places or multiple times. For the majority of this week, God has given me some fresh stuff just for this church. And who's here this week? So if I tend to stick to my notes and don't get down, usually it's not church to my people. And I'm not preaching until I get down on the floor with them. But if I stick here, just know it's because I'm trying to stick with what God has given me specifically for here. Amen? 2 Kings chapter 4 beginning in verse number 1. When you have it, say amen. Amen. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the, in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels. And uh, thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him. And shut the door upon her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her. And she poured out, and it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her sons, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. This morning, I want to speak on this thought. All God needs is a vessel. Would you stretch your hand this way and ask God to anoint us for the service? Father, we love you, Jesus. We praise you and worship you. And we honor you. I know, Lord, that nothing can be done lest you do it. God, I know I'm just a mortal man. I pray, Lord, that they hear the words from you and not from me. That when they hear the words coming from my mouth, that they know that it's the Spirit of the Lord speaking to them. God, I pray that you would be glorified. Anoint me with a fresh anointing. This morning I pray and we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. And the church shouted, Amen. 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 You may be seated. I know that typically you want to save your main point toward the end of the service. You want to build it to a point where you get to that point and everybody is just waiting for you to hammer that last point. But this morning I want you to be thinking about the point that I'm trying to make. I want you to think in your spirit, in your heart, down deep inside what God is wanting you to know. That all God needs is a vessel. All God needs is a vessel. God is wanting you to know right out of the gate this morning that he is ready to move and to help you, but you must provide him with a vessel. God will not move in your life, in your circumstances, and in your home, unless he has a vessel in which to move through. You see, this woman has been through a heartbreaking time. She has just lost her husband, lost the love of her life, her helpmate. Uh, and she had two sons, the Bible tells us. And it isn't any stretch to say that because of her two sons, that she has been yoked to this man for many years. She's been with this husband probably for, for, for a good amount of years and grown to know him, but in this time she is broken and broken hearted. I don't know if you're here this morning and have lost a loved one or lost a spouse, but you know what I'm talking about when I tell you about her brokenness and her broken heart. And she was uh, bonded to him. She had shared a union of marriage to him. She loved this husband. We know he was a good man because she tells us in the scripture. She said, thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. The statement tells me that this household is one of those households that spend their life in the servanthood and worshiping and loving and honoring God. They have been living in right standing with God. And sometimes you need to remember who it is that you serve. 
Sometimes we need to remember where we came from. So, oh, come on now. Hallelujah. All through the years, God has watched this woman and her husband, and he's watched them give honor to him and fear him and love him. They have made their sacrifices and poured their hearts out to God. They, pray, they raised their boys the way they should. I know that Proverbs 22 and 6 hadn't been written yet because the man that wrote it hadn't been alive yet. But they raised their boy nevertheless in the fear of the Lord. They raised their children in the way they ought to go. That way when they're old they wouldn't depart from it. Come on here. How many of you are spending the time, taking the time in yourselves to make sure that your kids are founded in that of Jesus Christ? This woman and her husband through their life together have been working on this very thing together. They've been putting in the time and the effort. They have been going to church every time the door is open out of faithfulness to God. They got into service with their pastor. If you can't tell, I'm going to start equating this to you in this church. Maybe they work at the school as volunteers. Maybe they were cooking for special occasions. You got a Thanksgiving thing come up. Uh, they honored their pastor. Maybe they even cleaned bathrooms. I tell my church when we talk, because we're doing a volunteer type thing when it comes to cleaning the church, I tell them that there is nothing that I would ask them to do that I would not do myself. Unless it's heights. I can go so high, and if I feel stable, I'm okay. But I might ask somebody to do with heights or snakes or spiders. But I tell them that there's nothing that I will ask you to do that I would not do. As a matter of fact, the other week, because there was a, 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 some kind of a misinformation, I come to church Sunday morning and it wasn't vacuumed. You know what happened? I didn't wait for somebody to get to the house of God to appoint somebody to vacuum the church. Pastor went back there to the closet and grabbed the vacuum and began to vacuum the church. Why? Because I'm not uh, the servant of the people. I'm the servant of God. His house is important to me. I tell my church that the way that his house should look, it should look honorable unto him. When people come into the door, they shouldn't see a mess and a pigsty. Thank God this church, you come in this church and it's clean and nice and ready for service because people here honor and love the Lord. These people have been a part of that. Just like you, you and, you and I have been a part of the servanthood of Jesus Christ through our life. But she was a daughter of the prophets. Remember when I said it's good to remember who you are? Sometimes you need to remember where you came from. This woman began to hit a hard time in her life. And because of her background in her life, being a daughter of the men of God, she knew exactly where to go when trouble began to hit. Hallelujah. She knew about God and His power. She knew about the grace and mercy of God. Therefore, when she was in trouble, she knew who to get a hold of for the answer. Thank God that when I am in trouble, all I have to do is fall down on my knees and begin to worship and praise Him and honor Him. Hallelujah. She called upon God's man because a chance of events that had been into her life has caused detriment. This, this husband that had died had caused way for the creditor to begin to come a call. Oh, you're awful quiet this morning. He died. The creditor's coming. And he's coming after her boys. You see, you can go your entire life thinking that you have the bull by the horns. And that everything is in control. To come to a tragedy and find out how in trouble you really were. You knew God, but you were flirting with the creditor of life for the long term and it caused you to fail and to fall into a place that you were trying to avoid. Every good man and woman, uh, we go to church and still play around. Uh, when you go to church, if you play around with God and you're coming to church and you're showing that you're a good godly Christian, you know when to raise your hand when they're singing. You know when to shout amen when the preacher says say amen. You know how to buck and kick. But when you walk out the door, if you're not living a life that's pleasing unto him, what you're doing is you're playing with the creditor and you're not being honest and true to God. 
I know it's tight, but it's all right. God's going to begin to break some things. Why? Because he told me he was going to break some things. He told me he was going to do something. And in order for him to do something, he's going to begin to have to stir the pot. And sometimes he's got to begin to stir to get that out which is not supposed to be there. Have you ever seen the gold or that you see in the store? What they first do with that gold is they take that gold and they put it in a little bowl and begin to heat it so hot that it melts. You know why they do that? It's so when they begin to melt that gold that the impurities and the imperfections will begin to float to the top and God can scrape out the mess that's not supposed to be there. So this morning, I'm coming to help some people learn that they need to be vessels of God. And in order to do that, i got to suspend you over the fire of God so he can burn out the impurities in your life. Hallelujah. Our lives are meant to be lived for God. You're not, you know what? You go to work, and that's great. You go to school, and that's wonderful. You go uh, on family vacations, and that's wonderful. But that is not what you and I were created to do. We were created to love, honor, and worship God. Hallelujah. And I can tell you this morning, that creditor doesn't care who you are. That creditor is only worried about getting what's his. That creditor did not care about her dead husband. That creditor did not care about her having two boys. That creditor didn't even care that she was a daughter of the prophets. All the creditor cared about was destroying her life for what they borrowed and could not repay. The enemy this morning does not care who you are. The enemy this morning does not care who your man of God is. The enemy this morning doesn't care who your mama and daddy were. I don't care if they were the greatest saints you've ever known in your life. He does not care. That enemy comes for one thing, to steal, kill, and destroy. And anything you give to him, he will exploit in your life and try to twist you out and make you feel that you're not worthy. But all you got to do is look back to the one that shed his blood on Calvary who washes your sins away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So she's calling on the man of God for help. Isn't it great to have a man of God close by that you can call on? It's good to be able to have a man of God and a woman of God to be your pastor. I know your pastor. I've only been to two youth camps in my life as campers. And your pastor was my counselor in one of those camps when I was just a boy. If you'd have told me later on down the line that I'd be preaching uh, camp meeting here with him, I probably would have believed you because I knew I was called to preach already. You didn't think that was going to go that way, did you? (laughs) But she's turning to God. She's turning to the man of God. And I'm thankful. You need to lift your pastor, your pastor's wife up. They need your prayers this morning because they are the man and woman of God for this church. They not only have to worry about their own spiritual well-being, but they're always worried about the spiritual well-being of their church. I'm reminded of this boy that had a sick mother. And she began to grow weaker and weaker. It was just her and her son. And she told her little boy, she said, don't worry, son. Everything's going to be all right when the man of God comes. As he was there with her day by day, he just watched her grow weaker and weaker and weaker. And you, her, the mom could tell that there was such worry on this little boy's face. That was all that he had was his mother. And he's growing weary, but she kept telling him, Son, when the man of God gets here, it's going to be all right. He kept looking. Every day would go out to the window and would look out hoping that a man would be walking down the way. Till all of a sudden one day a man came walking down the walk and come up and knocked on the door. The boy with worried face opened that door and looked up to him with worry in his eye and said, Sir, are you the man from God? Are you the man that God has sent this way? Because mama said 
when the man of God came here that everything was going to be all right, that man looked down at that little boy and said, yes, sir, the man of God has come into the building. I'm telling you today, you've got a man behind the pulpit. I am a man of God. But the real man of God, the Holy Ghost, is already here looking to do something in this house. And he's looking to help you with whatever it is and the worry that's been on your face because you've not been the place you need to be. He's ready to wipe away as soon as he said, I'm the man of God. The worry left his mind because he knew when the man of God got there that everything would be just fine. Hallelujah. Men of God, the men of God, thankful for the men and, men and women of God. I'm thankful to be counted among the number of the men and women of God. You see, the key here to this woman is she was desperate. I don't think that we grasp how desperate she is. Many times I tell my church to take care and notice when they read through things because we miss things a lot in our life. And I may tell you something about this story. You may have heard this story many times, but I may tell you something right now that you've never really grasped in the fullness. The man of God, I'm leaving my notes. Ask God to help me. The man of God began to do something. He asked her a question, two questions. He asked her these questions said, um, what uh, She said, tell me, what shall I do for thee? And tell me, what hast thou in your house? And the maiden said unto him, Lord, said unto him, I, I, there's, there, I, there's nothing in the house. I have not anything but a pot of oil. There's nothing left. In other words, I can take this scripture to mean this right here. Before she's gone to the man of God, she's done everything that she could possibly think of to do to save herself. She started maybe with the rugs. She took the rugs down to the pawn shop and pawned them off. Then that wasn't enough to suffice the enemy. She went and sufficed, she went and began to grab the drapes off the walls. That wasn't enough. She grabbed the, the couches and the furniture and the beds that they slept on. Everything that was in her house from the kitchen, the pots, the pans, the stove, whatever she had, she got and sold just trying to do her best in herself to save her and her boys. But God needs you to understand this morning that there's nothing in your house worth of value in your own self that you can do to get what you need from him. But the beautiful thing about this story this morning is that she told him right after she said there's not anything in the house except a pot of oil. You see that pot is a representation of Jesus Christ. And the oil down inside, I feel the Holy Ghost. The oil down inside is a representation of the Holy Ghost. Come on now. What that tells me in this scripture is this woman got rid of all the other junk in her life but God is reminding her that the only thing that she needs is him. She got rid of all of the other distractions and the problems and when they weren't enough to suffice her she found out that she still had all that she needed in that pot and in that oil. As soon as she said that I believe the man of God's mind began to be, be, be stirred by the Holy Ghost. He said, I think that he understood what, what was happening here. That God was leaving her with the only thing that she needed. For you to get what you need from the Lord this morning, you have to understand this very point. That the only thing you need in your life is God. Come on. He's got everything you ever needed in your life. Come on. The rugs, the drapes, the couches, the money you got in the bank, that doesn't suffice God in your spirit, but the only thing that suffices Him in your spirit is His Son, Jesus Christ. So He tells her to go borrow vessels. Borrow not a few. That right there this morning is to this church. God is looking for vessels, and He's not just looking for a few. Anybody in this house that will make themselves a vessel unto Him, He is going to pour into this week. Come on now. God, I know God is here to do something in this. 
skeptical mind here, I know that God is here to do something in this house. You look up here and say, I've been to church many, many, many times. That doesn't matter. All it takes is one moment for you to give your heart to Christ and become the vessel that he wants you to be. Let me break this pot and this oil down just for a little while longer. You see, he tells them to go borrow vessels and not a few. What he should have said was this. Go borrow vessels that are after the kind of the pot that's in your house. Come on, you know where I'm going? Come on, I told you that pot represented Christ, right? He said, go get you vessels that are a representation of the Son of God. Oh, come on now. We're just getting good here. It's getting good. She goes and borrows these vessels. And I can just see her, her sons, going out to, to find vessels. And that's exactly what God's doing. I'm coming down. We're about to have church. I can see her boys going out. And when they find a vessel in the house, they look at it. Yes, this one works. Yes, yes, this one works. We'll take it to the house. It's empty. We'll take it to the house. Yes. This one works. This morning, the Holy Ghost right now is beginning to walk through these aisles. And he's going right to you where you are. And he's saying either, yes, this one will work. Or he's looking at you and he's seeing some cracks. And he's seeing some brokenness. And he's saying, no, this one ain't going to work like it is. Oh, come on. He's going through pew by pew. Every one of you. This isn't just some blanket statement. God, the Holy Ghost right now is going heart to heart searching to who looks and is a representation of his son. Why? Because this week he's got something precious to pour into you. But you cannot be poured into unless you resemble his son. What does it mean to not resemble his son? It means you're broken. It means you've got cracks and holes. It means that when he begins, even if he would, it means that when he begins to pour into you, that you can't hold what he's got to give you. Because you're not a vessel worthy of the oil. The only thing worthy of the oil is Jesus Christ. Do you want to know how I know that? Because God said that Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. So you are not worthy of what he has to give you unless you are a worthy vessel modeled after that of Jesus Christ. We need to take a look in the mirror this morning while the Holy Ghost is beginning to look down in our heart and see if there's any cracks or any problems that there may be. I submit to you that some of you have cracks and you've tried to put bandages over them in yourself and none of that has been enough for your life before and it's not enough now for God. Well, pastor, what do I do whenever I have to take that bandage off and it reveals that thing that's most vulnerable about my spirit? I'm going to tell you what you got to do. You've got to go back to the potter's table. God is our potter and we are his clay. We are molded in his image. And when God begins to do something on the inside of us, he makes us worthy of the anointing of God. God will take you where that broken part is. See, the first thing you've got to do is be honest with yourself. This is the hardest part. This is the hardest part about being a pastor. When you preach what God has for the people and then you give an altar call and nobody is being honest with themselves. Because if they were being honest with themselves, they would flood the altar with what God has given them in their life. And I'm telling you this morning that God wants to do something this week. But unless you get to a place in which he can do something in and through you, you're not going to reach your potential. I know what I'm talking about. You know how many times, I was a preacher's son. My daddy pastored the LaBelle Church of God right now. You know how many camp meetings I went into, not really caring about my soul. I was there to play the organ or, or play some type of music and sing and just hide behind my organ. But what I did was I used that organ as a bandage to cover that thing inside of me that was broken and I needed God to dig out and make new. And when I began to take the bandages off and let God put me on the table. He began to take some more clay where I had broken myself in sin. And he took that clay and said, Son, I'm not through with you yet. And began to mold me and re 
reshaped me. And he put that clay, that precious clay that is Jesus Christ, down in them cracks and them vessels. You want to know what happened when he did that? You want to know what happened when he fixed the broken vessel that I was? He began to pour his spirit inside of me. He began to pour all that I needed to be in me. I found, Pastor, I told you, Pastor, I found that, I, that the longer, when I began to pastor, I found out how little God needs me. God just needs me to be his vessel. All God needs you to be is a vessel. Who here, does anybody here work for the sugar plants? Anybody here work for a bank? A school? I should have said school to start with. It's all right. I figured being right next to the sugar, <laughs> somebody had to be a sugar worker. I guess not. You ain't got no sugar in the house. In order for you to be what God needs you to be in that school, you're lucky here because a lot of you, I'm guessing, work for the Christian school here. But if you're working at any other place, and even here in this Christian school, you've got things to pour out of you that your pastor's not meant to pour out. Come on. Come on. This church is not about a pastor and a pastor's wife doing everything. I'm thankful you had some beautiful worship this morning. And I know that there's people that are here that God is already using. But I'm telling each and every one of us under the sound of my voice that God has a purpose and a plan for you. And wherever you go, you need to have the oil of God inside of you to pour out to this world. But you will never, never be the vessel God wants you to be without His Son. I told him yesterday, I preach loud and I preach quiet. This don't bother me. Because what's happening is the Holy Ghost is dealing with people's hearts. Because you know you're not the Christian you ought to be. You know you're not pouring out what you ought to be pouring out. You want to know why? You want to know why your efforts are not causing uh, things to happen? Why you're not getting results? It's because you're not worthy of the oil. God has searched you. And he's found that you're broken and there's cracks. And he will not, he will not tip himself to someone that is not worthy of the oil. This week, I told you, God has got, uh, let me make it fit better. God has a pot ready for each and every individual that comes into this house for every service. And God is going to be looking, waiting to see what you do. Because the moment that you respond to what he's got for you, he's going to begin to tip that oil. But only till you're ready. Only till you're ready. I said a few minutes ago, we need to build off of each service. Unless you can get your heart right in this Unless you can come down here and make sure that you are worthy of his son. Then your camp meeting stops right here. Well, I'll be here the rest of the week. It don't matter. I've been in service after service after service when I was broken and it did nothing for me. They preach on the Holy Ghost. I go down on the Holy Ghost. But I could not recognize and be honest with myself that I was broken. I need... I don't know who you are, but I needed a healing from God and God would not put out the healing until I was worthy. Now, I'm not saying that's me. That's specifically for somebody in here. I, come on, I come this week to see salvation. 
deliverance, sanctification, baptism in the Holy Ghost, healings. Hey, it's happening still today. Just a few weeks ago, uh, in, our, in, my, in our revival with Brother Brian McDonald, he came. He's been here before. A man in my church had a bladder that was dead for seven years. Seven years he had to use a catheter himself to, to relieve his pressure from, from his body because his bladder would not work. That one night in our revival, after seven years of a dead bladder, God healed his body. He's still in the miracle working business. But that man, I'd been watching him. He had been becoming a vessel that God could use. When I got there, he wanted the Holy Ghost. We were preaching. God was giving him the truth that would help him mold that clay down inside. And God filled him with the Holy Ghost while I was preaching. He didn't even come down like normal. I walked by while I was preaching and the power of God was in the house. And I tapped him and said, God will fill you with the Holy Ghost. He started speaking in tongues. Why? Because of God. I can't determine when you're going to get your oil. But all I can do is tell you how to get your oil. This morning, all you need to model yourself after is Jesus. If you're lost without Him, you're not living for Him completely, all you need to do is come down here and give your life to Him, repent of your sins, and you become a vessel worthy. All of you that have been here, that have been uh, become lukewarm in yourself, you've just been sitting back, not really getting into worship, you've kind of waned on your praying, you've waned on your Bible reading, you've waned on your spiritual study, all you got to do is come down to the altar and pour your heart out to Him. What you don't see is when you do that, God begins to take his clay. He says, you know what? I can do something with this. And those of you that have been broken, would you come to the piano for me? Those of you that have been broken and you have cracks and you're hiding them, you get no benefit from that. Because when the sons, because when the Son of God begins to come into this house, when the Holy Ghost begins to move through these aisles, if you're not willing to make yourself a vessel in which He can do and use, He's going to pass you by. Would you stand with me this morning? Hallelujah. I like that song. Pass me not, oh gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry While on others thou art calling Calling Do not pass me by I'm not going to sing the rest, but the next part is Savior He's your Savior this morning I don't know who you are But God does I don't know where you were at when the enemy caused you to sin and put a broken piece in your vessel. But God does. I don't know that you've grown lukewarm from God. But God does. And I know that anybody in this house, listen to me, anybody in this house that will be honest with themselves this morning that wants to be something that God will pour into this week. I know that if you'll Put your heart in prayer in this altar. By faith, God is going to make you a vessel worthy of the oil. All I need is a vessel. God's saying that to you this morning. That's not just me. God is saying for this week, I've got something for you, but all I need is a vessel. All I need is for you to get past what you are, what you think, and let me make you what I want you to be. You can't make yourself what God wants you to be. You've got to let him do it. This morning, if that's you, you need to move right now. If that's you, you need to move. I've been in church long enough to know 
that not everybody in this house is where they ought to be with God. Come on. I worked on a ranch not too far from here in Immokalee, down close to Immokalee, Dinner Island Ranch. And on my horse, I rode up some cows with some other cowboys. We got back to the pens. And the cowboys took their horses over to the water. And they were drinking. So I thought, well, maybe I'll take my horse over there. Maybe she's thirsty. I walked my horse over to that water. And I let my reins down as a signal to her saying, you can take a drink. But she would not drink. Me and Brother Sullivan can lead you to the water all week long. But if you don't dip your head down to the King of Kings, you will never receive what you need. You need to step out this morning. You need to make a move this morning. Come on, this altar is open. By virtue, there we go. You don't have to be first. You don't have to be first. Hallelujah. Up. Devil's lying to someone saying, well, they've moved. That feeling can go. It's not me. No. That feeling that you had was God and he's pulling you. Stop trying to let the devil push you away from it. Stop trying to explain it away. God is wanting you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for you, but you need to bear your heart out to God. You need to tell him what you want this morning. You need to offer up to him prayer this morning. Come on. He is going to do. He's already.